I was born to a single mom and raised by her and my grandparents. My grandparents were born in England but spoke German and had a German name. My father grew up in Brooklyn, New York, with my grandparents. In Norwegian my name is pronounced you but my father used to call me Joe. The life my grandparents had was thoroughly American. They built a small ranch into a huge operation and fulfilled my great-grandparents' dreams. Theirs was, a simpler time of contentment and patriotism. My grandparents had died in 1983, and suddenly my brother is out jogging before mass, and he dies. My activism did not spring from my being gay, or, for that matter, from my being black. Rather, it is rooted fundamentally in my Quaker upbringing and the values that were instilled in me by my grandparents who reared me. For those that don't know, my sister was born with Down syndrome, and she was institutionalized in the very early 60s. Me, being just a small boy and being shuffled around between my mother and grandparents, I never knew her. Though not into films, my family was associated with films. My grandparents financed films. They didn't like me getting into films. But, destiny willed it so. We grew up in Islington, North London, in a Georgian terraced house that nowadays would be split into flats. Our grandparents lived upstairs, there was another tenant living up there and downstairs was the office where people in the area paid their rent. My grandparents were always farmers. We live in a very different world than the one that we inherited from our parents and from our grandparents. Times are changing, and states must adapt to win. I don't really, go to, the opening of an envelope. I don't really turn up to all the events, you know what I mean. If I'm involved, I'll go, and if there's a good friend who needs support, I'll go, but otherwise, I don't go. I'm probably just a bit like my grandparents, I like staying in. My grandparents, my mom's parents, they're Jewish, but nobody ever pushed religion onto us. It wasn't something I ever grew up with. If you're lucky enough to still have grandparents, visit them, cherish them and celebrate them while you can. We must ensure full access to all reproductive health services, including abortion. We must also provide for our aging population, ensuring our parents and grandparents have the care they need. We must defend Medicare, expand Social Security, and provide tax credits for families who care for their elders and loved ones with disabilities. My parents and grandparents have always been engaged in teaching or the medical profession or the priesthood, so I've sort of grown up with a sense of complicity in the lives of other people. So there's no virtue in that, it's the way one is raised. I remember hearing stories from my mother and father about their parents and grandparents when they were taken off the reservation, taken to the boarding schools, and pretty much taught to be ashamed of who they were as Native Americans. You can feel that impact today. Both my grandparents were officers in World War II, and I would be personally offended if somebody distorted their achievements. I phoned my grandparents and my grandfather said, we saw your movie. Which one? I said. He shouted, Betty, what was the name of that movie I didn't like? At NBC I wasn't really sure if the grandparents were going to get my sense of humor on a particular topic. Nobody can do for little children what grandparents do. Grandparents sort of sprinkle stardust over the lives of little children. My dad's paternal grandparents were musically inclined, and I remember as a little kid going to visit them in their senior building, and they were, like, the stars of the building, especially hosting and performing in their senior talent show. I grew up with my grandparents around. I think that's important for a child, if for no other reason than to hear stories about their parents when they were children. My parents were the first in our family to go to grammar school. My grandparents were in service. My father was from Northern Ireland, and coming from somewhere like that, your faith defines you. That's something we don't really understand outside Northern Ireland, but because of my parents and grandparents, I've experienced it. I don't want folks with pre-existing medical conditions, like asthma and diabetes, to be denied health care. I sure don't want to see our grandparents paying more for prescription drugs and women paying more just because of their gender. The baby boomers owe a big debt of gratitude to the parents and grandparents, who we haven't given enough credit to anyway, for giving us another generation. As I got older, my pops tried to keep me involved with the culture by telling me the stories of the conflict between Ethiopia and Eritrea, how he came to America, and about our family back home. Because all that side of my family, my aunties, grandparents, is in Africa. When I was seven or eight years old, 
I began to read the science fiction magazines that were brought by guests into my grandparents' boarding house in Waukegan, Illinois. Those were the years when Hugo Jernsback was publishing amazing stories, with vivid, appallingly imaginative cover paintings that fed my hungry imagination. Maybe there is no actual place called hell. Maybe hell is just having to listen to our grandparents breathe through their noses when they're eating sandwiches. I grew up in Houghton, Louisiana. I go to my white grandparents' house, and then I cross the railroad tracks and hang out with my black grandma. We have English teachers on my white side. My grandpa is a principal. And then you go to the other side, and people have been in jail. I think women as well as men are concerned about jobs and the economy and spending and, and other issues. They're concerned that when their kids graduate from college they have an economy and they have a future in this country and they, they have the same opportunity that we've had and our grandparents have had. Once, I was out of the house 93 days in a year. I was missing grandparents' days at schools and kids' birthdays and Valentine's Day, not to mention the fact that when you're on the road, you can't get anything done. I had to learn to say, no, cut back on travel. I was raised by my grandparents, who had a little general store. My grandmother, Marion Dunham Bowman, was a graduate of Albany Law School. Although she never did practice law, she kept the house filled with books. It's because of her that I was always reading. I was born in April of 1966, on the eve of the Cultural Revolution. Soon after, my parents and grandparents all lost personal freedom simply for being intellectuals. So I spent most of my childhood rotating between adopted families of peasants and coal miners. All parents are an embarrassment to their kids. Often, grandparents are the relief. Kids don't have to resist you. My childhood was great, honestly. I have all these incredible memories of my childhood. I was an only child. I always had all my cousins around. I had my grandparents around. I had my parents around. I had my uncles around, whatever. I believe the wedding vows are sacred and precious, and it's been one of my goals as a writer to portray the kind of marriages I've seen modeled in my family, my parents and grandparents, who all celebrated 50-year anniversaries and well beyond. Why do grandparents and grandchildren get along so well? The mother. Let's set aside our political and ideological differences and take a moment to love our families, hug our children, parents and grandparents and through love and respect. Strengthen the bonds that made us the greatest nation on earth. I was born in Kerala, where my maternal grandparents lived, and stayed there till the age of one, after which I came to Maharashtra to live with my parents and moved all around the state with my father, who worked as a superintendent in an ordnance factory. My childhood memories include a time when the government confiscated my family's possessions and exiled us to a camp in the BC interior, just because my grandparents were from Japan. My mom is from Canada. Both my grandparents were from Canada. Christmas was the one time of year when my brothers surfaced at home, when my parents and grandparents congregated to eat my mother's roast turkey. My mother was 45 when she had me, so when I was in high school my parents were the same age as my friend's grandparents. When I visit any cathedral, it reminds me of being with my grandparents. They weren't particularly religious, but my grandfather was obsessed with architecture. I lost my sister Telsh to ovarian cancer in 1997 and my grandparents on my mother's side both had cancer but well into their 70s. The most watched program on the BBC, after the news, is probably Doctor Who. What has happened is that science fiction has been subsumed into modern literature. There are grandparents out there who speak Klingon, who are quite capable of holding down a job. No one would think twice now about a parallel universe. My grandparents were from Kentucky. I'm related to Daniel Boone. He was my great-great-great-uncle. My grandparents and my mom came from Cuba back in the 60s because they were fleeing from communism and Castro. I wouldn't be here otherwise. Visit our website for more quotes, quoting.com.